Hey guys, it's Jay Babs. Today I'm going to be going over burnout and ways you can avoid it. To help, I'm going to be using an article written by Thea Foray Bloom. She's a writer, artist, and editor. And I think I like this one because it, it gives it through the lens of an artist as opposed to just talking about burnout in general. Now, before we start, I want to give you guys a chance to do the best thing that you will do today. And that is give you a chance to subscribe. <laughs> okay, let's get right into it here. So the title of the article is called Are you making any of the 10 mistakes that boost burnout for artists? And then it jumps right into a quote by Gil Nainhus, who's a clinical therapist. And the quote reads as follows. Burnout is rarely associated with creatives, but it should be. Hmm. Now, I don't know if it's because... She's never seen an artist in her practice, but <laughs> I would say that burnout is very common among creatives. That's essentially the meaning of creative block. Or maybe it's not. Maybe creative block still means that you have energy and you just can't make something on a page. But I would argue that that is a symptom of burnout. Um, so let's keep going. Artists and writers work hard to produce large amounts of original creative material, often on very short, multiple deadlines. That is very true. <laughs> and as Nainas notes, unlike salaried 9-to-5 types, artists often endure long, stressful gaps between paychecks. This pressure combo can leave artists especially vulnerable to a state of mental, emotional, and physical exhaustion known as burnout. Causes of burnout vary amongst creatives, but the following are 10 general behaviors that artists, art business coaches, and therapists I spoke with agreed pave the way to work-related weariness. And now we're jumping into 10 things that lead to burnout for artists. It's an interesting intro. I mean, I don't disagree with a lot of what's said here. Um, it's definitely a very complex topic. So number one, we work really hard on the wrong things. I won't read this verbatim, but it talks about working too hard on social media campaigns that you don't enjoy. Some advice here is saying to pick one social media outlet that you do enjoy and essentially put the rest to, to bed and, and focus on enjoyment aspect, which is good advice. But then on the other hand, I can definitely see in this going back into the cycle of how artists might be paid. Since a lot are not typical 9 to 5 artists, these social media accounts are directly linked to their livelihood. So it's a little harder to step away from uh, an outlet that you might not enjoy if that is directly feeding you leads or connecting you with your clients or just allowing you to maintain your presence on the web as a as an artist that's active in the market however if it doesn't affect livelihood i can see that being good advice because it will free our minds from worrying about things we don't necessarily need to worry about or don't affect us so number one seems pretty reasonable number two Artists can burn out when we don't ask for feedback. This point here seems to relate to temporary artistic dead end, which it says is uh, can be helped by either hiring a, a coach or asking art friends or artists that are more experienced or anyone that can share your vision and help you get through that artist block in that temporary state. So feedback sometimes can open us up to improving the artwork in a way that we haven't seen or if it's if it's something that requires things like metaphor, help us think of, um, help us brainstorm a little bit so by the time you converge you're coming up with something that's solving the issue and you're now getting over that temporary state of burnout. And I have to say this article does seem very well researched in terms of being a bit personal to 
the experience of an artist. I've seen a lot of burnout articles or just advice on the web that is very generic and, and doesn't and doesn't highlight the root cause of burnout from an artistic perspective. So I am enjoying this article for that. Number three, we ignore change. Burnout is a sign something has changed, which is going to force you to adjust. The hardest thing to do is become self-aware and check under your own hood to see what's really going on. Maybe you've changed. Maybe the market has changed. Maybe technology has changed. One big sign of burnout is that you hate getting up in the morning. <laughs> um, I feel like I hate getting up every morning. <laughs> That's it guys, no hope for me. I'm in a perpetual state of burnout and I have been for the past, I don't even know how many years. <laughs> but I haven't always hated getting up. Sometimes I go to bed early and then I enjoy waking up. This will not be one of those times because I'm recording this eight minutes to midnight. <laughs> I'm gonna be burnt out tomorrow. Okay, jokes aside, let's keep going. So I see what this is saying. I mean, yeah, for sure. When you don't understand what's happening subconsciously un underneath the machine, which is yourself, things can seem off. You can't put a finger in it and you end up feeling like you don't want to paint, draw or do anything creative. And that's definitely a symptom of burnout. And I can relate to that at times as well. So it keeps on going here. It says maybe you secretly want to make a radically different kind of art that has nothing to do with your current art practice. Maybe now you want to write or sing or work in clay, but the shift terrifies you. Hmm. Now this is interesting because I don't always want to paint the same thing and that's actually why I like switching things up in terms of my day to day work. So I, I do design work in the daytime where I do UX and UI work. Um, and then I do a bit of motion graphics and then I do a bit of illustration. And I've always enjoyed cycling through different types of art or design. And this really helps to keep me, keep me going, keeps things fresh. And I'm often taking learnings from each practice and allowing them to inform each other. And I end up creating things I otherwise would not have ever come up with if I didn't have my foot in and in these different practices. So that's pretty interesting. By the way, I'll be leaving the, the link to this article below if you guys want to scrub through and see for yourself. Number four. Burnout for artists occurs when we fail to notice we have a physical body. <laughs> Sometimes even when you have managed to force yourself to stay strapped to your work treadmill, your body presses the auto eject button and you fly out. <laughs> I love this article. It's written in such a visually stimulating way. It, it, I'm reading about burnout and it's got me thinking about Buzz Lightyear. Anyways. <laughs> Now, I don't know about you guys, but that last sentence just had me finishing it off with to infinity and beyond. <laughs> I think um, this might be a sign that I need to stop recording these so late. Anyways, they go on to talk about an experience where they needed to get an MRI and get a back brace, which is pretty intense. Um, and then there's a quote here that says, my work may relax my mind, but it doesn't relax my body. And then they talk about some of the habits they do while they're doing the work, like getting up every 15 or 20 minutes to walk around and also getting a massage once a week, which they mention here that they don't actually like because of a dislike of being touched by strangers, which really stresses here how much they were willing to do to take care of themselves. So yeah, I can definitely gel with this. This is why I play sports a lot because I understand the, the value it, it's given in the long run, not just for health, but also for maintaining a long and enjoyable career. Because if I don't take care of my body, 
I'll have nobody to paint with. Damn that. That sounded a lot funnier in my head. <laughs> okay, number five. We are finally there. Artists burn out when we always say yes. Hmm. That's an interesting one. It says here, I was extremely burnt out years back and finally figured out the cause. I was saying yes to every show I was offered and doing everything for everybody. In my early 40s, I reached a turning point. If I wanted to be a calm person, a peaceful person, I had to protect myself. I decided to no longer agree to do every little show just because somebody asked me. It may sound snobby, but really it isn't. I was one person with no assistance and I couldn't keep doing that anymore or I was going to kill myself in the process. I almost got ill physically. That's how I learned to say no. And I think that's a good place to pause and pick it up in the next one. So far I'm enjoying this article. There's an, I wouldn't say there's a ton of brand new things, but there's definitely a lot of new focus to areas I had maybe neglected and a lot of it is applying right now where I may be feeling some burnout because of the lockdown. And while I didn't necessarily think about these things like physical activity, I knew them in the back of my mind and I had a feeling it had something to do with it. But after reading this, I, I start to think back to some of the studies that I had done on just physical well-being in general and mental well-being and it it is actually really important and can have a bigger toll on you than you think so yeah don't forget to go on some walks during this lockdown because staying home 8 to 12 hours a day weeks on end is not healthy and that's uh that's a wrap for this one uh hopefully you enjoyed this this little talk session and the artwork that's i'm making in the background and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe, bell for notification. If you want to support the channel, the best way to do so is to like, share, and comment. Helps the algorithms, and thank you, and I'll see you on the next one.